Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm working on a little pseudo modern drill press stand for my WEN 4214. It is advertised as a benchtop unit, but like other 14 inch units is too large for a standard height counter. It's oddly sized in between something built as a floor standing unit and something that would be comfortable to work on when placed on a bench. The real solution is custom. This is also the first project I've modeled in CAD before building, so that whole process was a learn-on-the-go experience. It was actually pretty fun though, being able to render, make design changes, and then look at the final product before anything was actually cut convinced me to go this route in the future. You can even see what your drill press stand would look like sitting in a Russian courtyard. Fusion 360 makes it pretty easy to create part drawings from projects. If anyone wants these, I'll make them and the project itself available. Links will be below. Truth being told though, I'm not sure how good they are, being my first try at all. Also, for what it's worth, the drill press shown rendered isn't specifically the WEN, just a generic 14 inch unit I pulled off of GrabCAD or Thingiverse and then colored and scaled in Fusion. To get going on the build, I started by breaking down some 2x6s. The plan here is to plane them down to 1 inch thick and that material will be used to build the shell. To be honest, I wasn't totally confident that running low quality, knotty dimensional lumber through my planer was a good idea. I found some conflicting info on the forums with advice ranging anywhere from I would never do it to I do it all the time. I decided to just go for it considering the worst case scenario was that I ruined a set of replaceable cutting knives and would learn a lesson either way. It took 20 to 30 minutes of continuous work, but I eventually got everything to the correct thickness. The secondary reason for doing this was to remove the corner radius found on building lumber. Anyway, got it done, and the planer appears to have taken no damage, so I consider that a win. If you've ever wondered what a powdered 2x6 looks like, here it is. Next up, I need to joint the edges. I don't have a jointer, so I'm going with the router table trick. Basically, I'll just shim one side of the fence and index that side off of a straight cutting bit. In effect, making a jointer with a one inch capacity. Luckily, that's precisely what I need. Everything was in pretty good shape to start, so I only needed one pass. If you're really new to the game, we performed this step for a couple reasons. To square the edge to the face, to remove any bowing, and to provide a clean surface for glue up. We take an edge that looks like this and turn it into one that looks like this. In order to keep the faces lined up when clamped, I'm going to install some number 20 biscuits. Gluing them together is pretty straightforward. Uh, I know everyone loves parallel clamps, and I do too, but for some reason I always grab the old school pipe ones instead. I especially like these Bessie branded ones with the built in feet and non marring plastic pads. The next morning I was able to take my new panels made from planed 2x6s over to the table saw to square them up. I first cut off one rough edge using the miter gauge and then cut the opposite side parallel to that using the rip fence. Despite using the biscuits and being careful with glue volume, I still had some little ridges and lines to clean up. This is the belt sander's job. And I really like this little skill one I've got. It's pretty cheap, but is honestly the most comfortable one I've ever used. I feel like someone made it ergonomically just for me. The whole built-in dust filtration doesn't really work that well though. I'm also using some Rockler bench cookies to keep the panels off the table and semi-locked in place. If you don't have a set, maybe consider picking one up. They're a pretty cheap workshop luxury that ends up getting used all the time. Over uh, on the table saw, I've got a dado stack set up to cut some channels for the center shelf and rear panel. I was a little nervous making these cuts because they were done via dimensions taken directly off the CAD drawings. I was really trying to stick with them in order to verify the plans were good. Still, it was a new feeling for someone used to just going into the garage and cutting pieces ad hoc. Here are the side panels after I was done machining and sanding. 
Not the world's greatest finish, but I think they look pretty good considering they came from 2x6s. After that, I just built each component without testing for fit on the fly. Here's my first attempt at any sort of assembly. I thought it went together pretty well. Considering this was my rookie go at Fusion 360, I'm pretty pleased with the fit up on my little wooden box. Unfortunately, because I rendered everything with finish on it, I didn't catch the fact that an unfinished plywood edge would be front and center, so I had to edge band it with some quarter inch solid pine stock I had sitting around. Uh, I'm attaching the top and bottom panels using the pocket hole screw and glue method. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process, uh, just using the pipe clamps to keep the vertical panels from moving out as they tend to do as the pocket screws are tightened down. Next up, I've got a pretty sketchy operation going on. I'm taking the relief off of some manufactured cove base. This is honestly better than on a bandsaw, so I don't know where my head was at here. You probably shouldn't do it. It's purely aesthetic. I'll be using it to make the inside radius on the rounded over top panel. I then glued it into place, let dry overnight, trimmed, and then sanded flush. Off camera, I installed some dowel pins to plug the pocket holes. So while I've got the flush trimmer on my multi-tool, I'll clean those up as well. To get the outside radius on the top, I'm using this beast of a bit, a one inch roundover from Yoniko. It was relatively inexpensive compared to a Freud, CMT or Whiteside coming in at about the third the price, but review said it was all right. I was routing on end grain, which is similar to planing on it. That means it's generally a no-go. Nevertheless, I thought I'd make it work by taking four or five light passes instead of one or two big ones. The table really helped here. I'm not sure I would have wanted to try this bit handheld though. Despite going light, I ended up with what I feared, quite a bit of tear out. Otherwise, the profile was nice and clean, so I'd give that cheap Yoniko bit a thumbs up. Anyway, I went ahead and cleaned up that edge with some wood filler, hand applied as a flat putty knife would be awkward on something round. After sanding both the inside and outside, I got a really natural looking curve on both. Assembling the drawer slides was pretty easy, everything went together per the plans. The real test was coming up next though, I designed the drawers with enough clearance to enable the use of standard half inch wide slides. These are always a little tricky as a slight mismeasurement or misalignment means the drawer won't operate correctly. So I really had to be careful everything was edge to edge here. After the drawers were complete, I had just a few small details I wanted to finish before painting. Things like placing a small radius on the front face and corners. Paint wise, I went with a hammered black gloss finish for the drawer fronts and an aluminum metallic one for the body. No rhyme or reason for this, kind of like my own little homage to the streamline modern or modern architecture of the 1930s, which happens to be my favorite design style of pretty much all time. When it was dry, I went and glued everything into place. I'm using Gorilla Glue Clear Non-Foaming Adhesive. I've never used it before and didn't really like it all that well. It's really viscous and took an abnormally long time to dry, even for a solvent-based product. Sliding it into place revealed a little oopsie. When I faced this shelf earlier, a deviation from the plans, I forgot to cut the corresponding amount off the back. The end result being it was too long, but oh well, an easy fix. I marked the holes for the drawer pulls using the two square method. This way I was able to set my X and Y distances without marking the face. As I went to install the drawers, I realized that I had made a rookie mistake. The hardware was backwards, so another quick fix. The drawers otherwise slid into place without too much fuss, but were operating a bit less smoothly than I was used to. After some trial and error, I found that a couple of my slides weren't perfectly perpendicular to the face, so I made a jig and remounted them. Like in this situation, even a 16th or a 32nd off and they just don't work right. I installed the color matched casters to the base using one quarter inch lags. 
After moving the drill press and stand around a few times, I'd go about this differently if I were making a version 2.0. Despite being of the locking variety, they still tend to slide a bit on my epoxy floor. I would have preferred to use a mobile base when makes one that matches the drill press, and I very well might make that upgrade in the future. The last thing to do was install the 4214. Hopefully this will be the last time I have to move this thing as it weighs like 90 pounds. I affixed to the top using a couple of 5 16 bolts and called it done. Overall, I think it turned out pretty nice. If anyone was curious why I left the top open, it was because I wanted to leave room to store a future drill press table. And the cord tucks nicely in there as well. And that's all I had. Uh, links for everything below. Some of them are associate links for which the channel earns a small commission over at Amazon. Use is greatly appreciated. The plans themselves uh, are free, but they're not perfect and you can't complain because I'm not charging for them and it's my first attempt using CAD. So, okay, take care.